Good evening, and welcome to our midweek prayer service. We are so glad you joined us tonight, and we're asking that we just spend a little bit of time in the Word of God and thank Him for His goodness towards us. We're going to look here in the book of Luke, Gospel according to Luke chapter 7 and verse 7. The Bible says, Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto you, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Neither thought I myself worthy to come unto you, but just say in a word and my servant will be healed. I'm going to speak from the subject tonight, trigger happy, trigger happy. We're praying, Father in heaven, thank you so much for your mercy and for your love. Dear Lord, teach us more of you. Help us, dear God, to get a better understanding, a deeper understanding, dear Lord, of you and your love toward us, that we, dear Lord, in turn may love you and dear Lord, love our fellow neighbor as ourselves. Help us, I beg you. Draw us, dear Lord, I pray, and save us. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Very, very powerful scripture. I love this passage of scripture. It's talking about Jesus. He's going into this town of Capernaum. And as he goes into Capernaum, the Bible says that he is approached by a group of elders from the local synagogue. Now, understand these elders, they attend church or they attend the synagogue and they hear Jesus in town and a centurion has come along because he wants to have them send a word to Jesus. And so he has come along, he has spoken to the elders and he's asking and go speak to Jesus and ask him to come and heal my servant. Bible says he asked for healing for his servant because the servant was very dear unto him. And so he sends the elders expecting, I guess, that the elders would have a relationship with Jesus because they are, in fact, elders of the synagogue. They come to Jesus, the elders, they find him. And the, what they say to Jesus is this. Look, there is a centurion whose servant is sick and he is worthy. Watch this now. He is worthy that you should do this for him. He's worthy that you should heal his servant because he has done much for our nation. He loves our nation and he has built us a synagogue. I want you to get this. They come to Jesus, the elders of the church, and they say, Jesus, we need you to heal this centurion, his son, his servant, because he has done much for us and he is worthy of you healing him. Now, I want you to understand what's going on. At no point are they asking Jesus to come and be the guest speaker for the upcoming community guest Sabbath. At no point are they saying, Jesus, we want you to serve in a certain capacity. We want you to be the head of our church. We want, us, we want you to lead us into um, truth and righteousness. We recognize that you are the son of God and we want to accept you as our Lord and our savior and cause you, oh Jesus, to be lifted up on high from our local synagogue here in Capernaum. No, 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 no. They simply say, hey, do us this solid heal the centurion servant. He is worthy of you healing him because he's built us a synagogue and he loves our nation. The Bible says Jesus is not responding. He just starts making his way to the centurion's house. He starts heading down in that direction. And the Bible says he, he went with them in verse three, and I'm sorry, in verse six. And as he's making his way with, the, um, with them to the centurion's house, the centurion now sends his friends. I want you to get this. First, he sent those who he thought were friends of Jesus, the elders from the church. Then he goes ahead and sends his own friends and says, look, I'm not worthy. I, I want you to get this. The elder said he is worthy. The friends come with a message from the centurion saying, I am not worthy. Trouble not yourself. I'm not worthy that you should even come under or enter into my roof. But here's what I want you to do. I just want you just to, just to, just, if you could just heal him from afar. But the Bible says as the centurion's friends are having this discussion in verse seven, all of a sudden the centurion now makes his way and he is now engaging Jesus. He says, look, wherefore I did not think that I was worthy. I want you to get this. They may have said I was worthy. They may have claimed that, that I am worthy based upon some things that I've done, but I want you to know, I do not consider myself worthy that you should enter into my house, come under my roof. But I just want you to say a word that my servant will be healed. He, here he goes now. He explains further in verse eight. He says, look, I also am a man who is set under authority. In other words, I am under the Roman governance. I am under the Roman rule. I, I, I am a man who is under authority, but I have soldiers who are under me, who are under my authority. And all I do is just say to one, go, and he goes. And I say to another, come, and he comes. And I say to that one, do this, and he does it. And Jesus, the Bible says, when he heard these things, he marveled. And he said, I have not seen so great a faith in all of Israel. I want you to get this. 
the centurion sent who he thought were friends of Jesus and they told Jesus he's worthy. The centurion really caring for his servant, recognizing that his servant may die, he then sends his own friends and says, look, let him know I don't think I'm worthy. That I don't even think that he should come under my roof. And as the servant, as a friends of the centurion are saying this, look, he doesn't think he's worthy. He doesn't think that he's worthy. He should even come under his roof. The centurion makes a trip. And now, so what, what Pen of Inspiration says is Jesus has gotten so close to the home, the centurion now bolts out of the home, leaves his sick servant, and comes to Jesus and says, look, I don't think I'm worthy. I don't think that you should even enter under my roof. But what I do think is that you should just, if you would, just, just speak a word. You see, understanding that the centurion recognized that Jesus is a man who has authority in his hand. And even though he's acting under the authority of heaven, he recognized that Jesus has things that are subservient to him. That if he just says a word, that there are certain things that can just happen because Jesus has spoken it. And as the words proceed out of the mouth of Christ, things move, things shake, things happen. He recognizes this is the same God who said, let there be. And it stood fast. He recognizes the same God who says, flee and demons flee. He recognizes the same God who says, leprosy yield and leprosy yields. And so he's asking this same God, say a word. Now, there's something powerful in a relationship with God that we can all take some, some, some stock in. Jesus has trigger words. I said it. There are certain things you can say to God that are triggers. You see, everyone has certain triggers in their life. There are certain things that just trigger you. And, and many of us, if we're being honest, we have certain triggers that end up causing us to fall into a situation we have no business being in. But the Bible is so powerful. This centurion says, look, I don't know if you recognize, I know I'm not worthy. And I'm simply asking you to not come into my house, not lay hands, not, not, not lift up and shake or, or move. I'm just asking you from where you are right now, just to say a word. But when he says, say a word, he's speaking to the word. Uh oh. When the centurion says, Jesus, speak a word. He's speaking to the word of God because John says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. In other words, in the beginning, the word of God was that same word of God that walked in the garden, that same word of God who said, let it be. And it was that same word of God that became flesh and walked among us and became one of us that he may save us to become one of him. Understand that word of God. So when the centurion says, just say a word, it's a trigger word for Jesus. And that word triggers Jesus to say, mm, now you're speaking my language. Now you're saying to say a word. You're asking the word to say a word. You're asking the word. You're asking Jesus to just speak about himself, to speak about who he is and what he is and how he is and who, why he is. And, and, and so you're asking God to, to now speak into your situation. And I, I would venture to say that it is in that moment when he says, just say a word. It is in that moment where Christ recognizes and, and identifies that the faith in this centurion, oh, if we would all have the same kind of faith to speak words to God that would trigger his reaction. We have to know how to get God to be trigger happy. Mm. There are some things we're going through and it would behoove us to start speaking the words to trigger God's joy, to trigger God's healing. Somebody's going through something and you're, 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 you're weighing in the balances and things that's going topsy-turvy. It could be family issues. It could be spousal issues. It could be issues with your children. It could be issues in the church where you're having a hard time accepting a word from a man of God because you don't know if they're truly genuine in what they're saying to you. You don't necessarily know if, if what they're saying is, is ordained by God because you see so much 
faltering in the church of God. Those who call themselves the remnant or the followers of, of Jesus Christ. You see so many people who are fall, and you're just having a hard time accepting truth. But here's what I have to tell you. If they say anything that is contrary to the word, here we go. If they say anything contrary to the word of God, there is no truth in them. But if they speak according to this word, you can accept it as truth. Put the man aside and take the word. We need to learn some trigger words today. There's too much going on not to have some trigger words with Jesus. Ask him to speak a word over your life. Ask him to speak a word over your situation. Ask him to speak a word over your health. Ask him to speak a word over your finances. Ask him to speak a word over your joblessness. Ask him to speak a word over your hopelessness. Ask him to speak a word. Ask him to speak a word over your homelessness. Ask him to speak a word. And my Bible teaches me that these are trigger words. They trigger the happiness in Jesus. They trigger the joy in your life. That he can then speak a word over your situation and cause blessings to bring down. He can cause the blessings that you are in so much need of to come pouring into your life. Because our God, he gets trigger happy when he hears certain words. And he pours out blessings when we trigger those things in our relationship with him. The centurion was thought of as worthy by the church leaders, but they had no relationship with Jesus. Do not rely upon pastors and elders and, and ministers to, to establish your relationship with Jesus. Get it for yourself. What I love the centurion the most, he sent the elders who should have had a relationship with Christ. They had none. He sent his friends who understood his, his, his situation. And, and by the end of the day, he recognized, I can't use a conduit. I can't go through anyone else. It has to be me and Jesus. And then he shows up. And he says the reason why. He says, look, I didn't think I was worthy. I know I'm not worthy. But I'm begging you for the sake of my servant. I, I care for him. And it is in that compassionate moment he triggers the love and compassion of Christ. Let's have the same compassion toward one another. Let's have the same desire towards Christ to trigger his goodness in our lives. Because Jesus, the Bible says, marveled. He was in amazement at the centurion's words. And he got trigger happy. The Bible says a servant was healed immediately. God will trigger the blessings in our lives immediately. If we would have just enough faith to go to him and ask him to speak a word on our situation. He is faithful and he is just to do it. I know many of us are hurting. All types are hurt. Many of us are disgusted. Many of us are troubled. But I can assure you, there is one who hears and understands all. It is not your pastor. It's not your elder. It's not your brother. It's not your sister, not your father, not your husband, not your wife. But there is one who knows all. His name, Jesus, and calling upon that name, that word, oh, he'll pour out a word in your life. And today we're asking that he'll pour out a word of blessing on your life. Let's claim that. Let's believe that. Let's hold on to that. In these times, in these days, God bless you all. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your mercy and for your love. We appreciate, dear Lord, all that you do. And we thank you so much, dear Lord, for being a God who is trigger happy in our lives. You will let loose so quickly, dear Lord, if you would just call upon your name. So I'm asking now, dear Lord, whatever the situation may be, wherever your children are, dear God, that you would just give them the, the extra push, the nudge they need, dear Lord, to call upon your name. That you may, dear Lord, unleash, dear Father, unleash the blessings you have for them. Pull the trigger, dear Lord, in all of our lives. Pull it now, I beg you and release the blessings you have for us. Help us, dear Lord, not to send a, 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 an elder from the church, not to send friends, dear Lord, to you, but to come to you for ourselves, that we may learn as a centurion learned, dear God. Our worthiness is not what matters. The fact that you are worthy, that's all that matters. So we can come boldly before the throne of grace, making our petitions known. We thank you, we adore you, we love you. Keep us, O oh Lord, in these trying times. I beg you, keep us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.
God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We look forward to spending time with you this upcoming Sabbath for our divine worship service that begins at 11 o'clock and our Sabbath school that begins at 10 a.m. God bless you and keep you until then. Have a great rest of the week.